Okay, we're rolling. All right, this is an interview at the Days Inn, Hicksville, New York. It is the 7th of August, 2007, approximately 10 a.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Nicholas M. Cerro. Uh, November 22nd, 1915. And where were you born? New York City. Okay. What was your educational background prior to going into service? Just up to the ninth grade. Okay. Um, do you remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Because I was down in Georgia. And then I came to uh, came Gordon, Georgia. Oh, you were already in okay, the service? You were in the service. You yeah. entered just before. Okay. War. Okay. Um, why did, did you enlist or were you drafted? Well, I. I enlisted under the draft. I went out of time. Okay. Um, did you pick the army? Well, I didn't know what to pick, so they gave me. Okay. They, they said, "What branch of service do you want?" I says, "I don't know." I said, infantry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, did you have any reason for that, or you just didn't? No, that's what they gave me. Okay. All right. Um, so you went in in uh, March of '41. Right. Okay. Um, where were you inducted? Uh, Fort Dix. Okay. And your basic training? Camp Corps, South Carolina. Okay. What was uh, your training like? Yeah, regular 18 weeks, basic, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of weapons did, did you still, did you have the O3s or did you uh, have... We, we had O3s at the beginning and then we got the M1s. Mm -hmm. How about, did you have World War One helmets at the time when you first went in, or did you get the new helmets? Well, they would like the uh, German helmets, you know. Almost similar. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, how about your food? How was your food at the time? Oh, good. Everything was good. Mm-hmm. What, what was it like going to Georgia, being a New Yorker? Ah. Huh. No different. In fact, we, uh, we were the first ones to transport a nonstop from New York to Georgia. Mm -hmm. you, you took trains all the way down? No. Trucks. Trucks? Motorized unit. Oh, really? For all the way from Dix to Georgia? Mm -hmm. well, that's interesting. How long did it take you? Yeah, I don't remember. Around three days, I guess. Mm -hmm. Did you stop and camp yeah. along the way? Right. Did you set up entire camps? Yes, we stopped in... Uh, it was a Camp Gordon, Georgia. We stopped in, uh, I was at Camp Carabell in, in Nebraska. Uh, where else? Can't remember. Mm -hmm. How long were you in uh, basic training? Well, 13 weeks. Did you get any specialized training? No, infantry. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, train with the 03 Springfield rifle at that time? Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, when were you assigned the M1s? Oh, okay. Do you remember? No. Well, was there a difference in the weapons? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the M1 was a doll. <laughs> in what ways? It's the uh, firing and everything. Accuracy. Although the old, old three was accurate, so. But the M1 was a rapid fire. Yeah, they said it had so much more firepower. Yeah. All right. When you were down there, then you were in the service when you heard about Pearl Harbor. Where, where were you? Oh yeah, I was ready to come home. <laughs> I was down in Georgia, mm -hmm. Camp Gordon. All right, and do you remember how you heard about it? We, we, I was in town at the time, and we heard about it in town. Mm -hmm. We all went back to camp. Right all right. Did you realize this would change your, extend your time in service? No. <laughs> <laughs> I did almost about, about four years, seven months. I was thinking of getting, coming home <laughs> mm -hmm. when this all happened. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Um, what happened with you then after you after Pearl Harbor, where did they send you? Oh, uh, I think now 
I was in Camp Gordon, Georgia. I was in the uh, in Florida. What deck is the name of that? I don't remember. That's okay. Now, did you get any kind of specialized training when you were in Florida? Uh, well, we got the invasion training, you know, on the boats and mm -hmm. nits into something the storm. Now, what kind of landing craft did you use? Did you use it? Uh, FCI. Okay, with the drop fronts? Yeah. Okay. Um, what did they do, take you out and then just bring you back in on shores, or did you go from sh larger ships and, and take oh, the raft in? When we, when we landed, we got off the larger ship. Mm -hmm. Onto the landing craft. Okay. How long did, was this uh, landing training about? Yes, I don't know. Off and on, you know, we, we were getting it mm -hmm. into me, and, and then later on we, we had to land. Mm -hmm. Now, were you assigned to a division by this time? I was in 4th Infantry Division. Okay. So <clears throat> you went overseas with the whole division? When did you go overseas? Well, I can't remember. <laughs> now, did you go in convoy? Yeah. How long did it take you, the crossing? I think it was three days. Did you get sick on the crossing? No. What kind of ship were you on? Uh, I think it was a, a, a President Washington. What kind of, kind of accommodations it's, did you have on the ship? Well, it was crowded, you know. Mm -hmm. crew. When you when you went to breakfast, you might as well stay for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Took you that long? Oh yeah. Now, what kind of food did you get on the ship? Oh, we had good food. How about your sleeping area? What was that like? Not bad. We were able to sleep. Mm -hmm. You did a good crossing then. Where did you land? La uh, Pardon? La uh, In France. Um, did you go to England at all? Yeah, I was stationed in England at the beginning. Okay, before you went uh, to land. Before we went to the land. Okay, so um, where did you go in England? Yeah. Uh, well, when I was wounded the first time, they sent me to the Avia General Hospital and they evacuated me in England. Mm -hmm. In uh, what Texas came to town? Exeter. No, you, before you. Went into the Normandy invasion, though you must have been in England too. Yeah, I was stationed in England mm -hmm. for a few months. Okay, where where were you stationed before the invasion? Oh, uh, well, the invasion we were heck, we weren't able to talk to nobody or nothing, you know. So. Oh, you were kept pretty well isolated. Yeah. Then. Now, did you do any landing practices while you were in England? Oh yeah. Uh, in Plymouth, we had a couple of landings. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the invasion. What you remember? Uh, we made the landing and well, how, started up. Well, when you went over to the landing, what kind of ships did you go on? Oh, uh, well, we landed uh, with the FCI's landing craft and mm -hmm. infantry. Okay. And then we had the uh, the big ships that we were all on, you know, and then we, they transferred, transferred mm -hmm. us to the LCIs. Mm -hmm. Which beach did you land on? Was it Utah? Utah. Or? Okay. What was it like when you went into Utah? Not bad. We didn't get much retaliation where we landed. Mm -hmm. Omaha got big bad. Mm -hmm. We didn't get hardly anything. Was your landing craft able to get right up to the beach? Yep. How did you feel when the gate went down and you had to start going in? I didn't feel anything. We were so used to, you know, all that stuff that you 
didn't think about it too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was it like on the beach? Oh, we went right through, went straight up the flat of this, yeah, like. Do you meet, you didn't meet that much resistance on your way no, up? No, not on the beach, not, well, uh, on the way up is where I got wounded. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about that? Well, I got hit by artillery cell and there's nothing to talk about much. <laughs> Whereabouts were you wounded? In the back, in the leg. Mm -hmm. Did the, uh, a medic take care of you when you were wounded? Yep. And how long was it before they got you off the beach again? Uh, that was, uh, I got wounded on the way up. Mm -hmm. I was off the beach already. Mm -hmm. I was wounded there in Mortain, about a day or two away from uh, Chippewa. Were you taken out to a hospital ship? Yeah. Well, I was in the 50th General Hospital. I was right on the front lines. Oh, okay. That was the first time. I can't remember the second time. So they um, gave you treatment on that evacuation hospital, and then they sent right. you off right to England? How long were you in England? Oh, not long, about a month. Now, did you go right back to your own unit? Yeah. Where were they at the, that time? <clears throat> I can't remember. can't remember. How, um, when you got back, was most of your unit there, or had many of the men been taken um, by then? Or? Out of 183 men, there were seven men and the original men left. So you must have had a lot of young replacements then. Oh yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> Did you uh, fight through the hedgerows yep. at that time? What was it like going through the hedgerows? Yeah, not too bad. It was, uh, yeah, they keep pushing them back all the time. Every time we charged, we yeah, get uh, onto the new hedgerow, you know. Mm -hmm. How long were you in combat this time? Uh, first time I got the, I landed on the fourth and got hit on the uh, eighth. Or the tenth, I can't remember. At the eighth, I think it was. When were you wounded the second time? In Philly. Pardon me? In Belay. Oh, okay. On the way up to Chevalier uh, still. Mm -hmm. Was it shrapnel again or? Shrapnel yeah, both times. Okay. Were you wounded in the same areas, in the back and in the legs yeah. again? Did they evacuate you this time? No, the second, the first time they I got evacuated this time. Mm -hmm. The Avias General Hospital in Plymouth, England. Mm -hmm. What about the second time? Well, the second time I got, uh, I was uh, operated right there in the Plymouth General Hospital on the front. Okay. Then how long were you in the hospital? Oh, about 30 days, I guess. Again, about 30. And then you went right back to your own unit? Mm hmm. And after that, Get transferred to uh, MP unit. Well, do you know about when that was? No. I know it was 180th uh, MP battalion. Mm -hmm. Now, what was your assignment with them? Well, I was uh, I was a platoon sergeant, so. I had mostly uh, officer managers in, sec in the MPs. Mm -hmm. Take care of the units, go over and get the reports, all the stuff like that. Now, how long were you in Europe? 
about a year and a half. It was three years in the States. Mm -hmm. Where did you go after being up front for a year and a half? Then? When you were in this MP unit, where were you stationed? Oh, all over France. The MP was just like being on the front lines. Why was that? The GI was causing so much trouble. <laughs> What were some of the things you remember being with the MPs? Oh, uh, we had a. Uh, there was one time a Frenchman came to us and said, uh, the American has a gun there. We had to go and get the gun. <laughs> was he drunk? No, just uh, reckless, you know. Uh -huh. So they weren't supposed to have guns when they were in the, the rear no, areas? No, not at that time, no. Uh -huh. Now, were you in Europe during the bulge? Yeah, uh, during the bulge. Right? Yeah, I guess I was. December '44. Were you assigned to the li front lines at that time at all? No, I was an MP then. Okay. You weren't called to the front during that no. time. But I was stationed in uh, in France and Soissons and. A lot of places, you know. Mm -hmm. We were mostly stop all the troublemakers. I'm, I'm men. <laughs> <laughs> what were your officers like? Oh, very good. They had good officers. Even on the front lines, we had good officers. Mm -hmm. How about your equipment? Do you think you were well equipped? Oh, yeah. No problem. Do you think you were well trained for the combat that you encountered? In fact, we made one charge in Mortain, I think it was. And uh, we captured one German, and he had Thompson submachine gun. He was used. But he didn't know how to put on automatic. So we sent him one shot and knocked him. <laughs> Lucky for you guys, right? Yeah, you're <laughs> Do you ever find out where he got the Thompson? No. We captured him and sent him back to the front line to the headquarters. Mm -hmm. Did you have any uh, unusual experiences that you want to tell us about? Oh, yeah. When we, I, I was shooting, we were making a attack. I was shooting, and the guy next to me said, stop shooting in my ear. And this is true. Do you remember anyone that uh, you were in service with that uh, stands out over others that were close friends of yours? Well, um, when I got wounded, out of 183 men, when I went back, there were only seven original men left. Mm -hmm. So, you know, wounded and killed. And So you lost a lot of the friends that you trained with oh, in the yeah. United States before you went overseas. Mm -hmm. How long were you in Europe? Were you there by the end of the war? I was still there. I was an MP then. Mm -hmm. Do you remember being over there and hearing about the death of President Roosevelt? No, you were yet. Well, how did you feel when you heard about that? You got enough to think about it. <laughs> Felt, we felt it, you know, but mm -hmm. not to... Where were you when the war ended in Europe? In France? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, what was the reaction among the troops? Nothing. <laughs> we knew it ended and that was it. Mm -hmm. Was there any talk about sending you guys to the Pacific at all? No. Did you ever get into Germany? No, but I went to Germany when I was there. No. Well, when I got right. in the MPs, I took trips into Germany. Mm -hmm. This was at the end of the war? Mm -hmm. Were you ever aware of the existing uh, existence of concentration camps? Oh, yeah, we know a little about that. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get to see any of them? I think I did see one or two. I went into Germany for that, though. 
This was after the, the end of the war, though. Mm -hmm. Were you, uh, when were you finally sent home? When I had my 50 points. <laughs> <laughs> when was that? 45. Mm -hmm. How did you return home uh, to get back to the United States on a ship? Yeah. Do you remember what ship it was? I think it was the President Washington. Where were you discharged? Uh, Fort Dix. What was your ranking at the end of the war? Tex Okay. Um, did you receive any other citations besides your two Purple Hearts? Well, the, uh, not really anything important. At the end of the war, did you uh, use the GI Bill at all after your discharge? I don't think I did. How about the 5220 Club? Well, that was after that. But I went right to work. Okay, you didn't use that at all? No. Did you <laughs> stay in touch with anyone that was in service with you? Well, you know, when I got transferred to the MPs, I lost all contact mm -hmm. with the, uh, all the other employees. Mm -hmm. Was there anyone in the MP units that you stayed in contact with? Uh, no, but I saw one of the girls from Massapequa in uh, one of the other hours. Did you ever see any USO shows while you were overseas at all? Oh, yeah. So a couple. Did you see Bob Hope? No, but I saw a fellow uh, took a uh, Goodman's place, the orchestra. Oh. McKinley had one orchestra. Uh huh. So I'm in Paris. Okay. Um, how do you think your time in the service had an effect on your life? Well, almost five years gone. <laughs> But it didn't, didn't matter too much. Do wounds ever bother you at all? No. Okay, he's got quite a few uh, whoops, photographs here. Okay, if you, I can just hold this up. That's my wedding face. Okay. When were you married? 1941. Oh, you were okay. married before you went into the... 46. 46 was. Forty-three. Oh, Forty-three. Yeah, okay. Right. So you were married just before you went overseas. Okay. Okay. And uh, there's a couple other photos. If you just hold this in front of you like this, he can focus on it and just tell us if you remember where and when that was taken. Okay, got that one. Okay. Oops. All right. This was an early one before he went overseas. I was on okay. All right, got that one too. Here's a uh, another one in uniform. That one looks like uh, it was before he went overseas because I don't see any stripes or anything. It doesn't show the stripes. No. Okay, got that. Now what is this? Remember that, Daddy? Well, this was Christmas. Tell them the story about that. Oh, I was, uh, it was Christmas and I was on duty. So I had my wife there and I couldn't get off for Christmas Eve. So I gave one of the guys $100 to take my wife out. 
Coraggio, his name was. I said, here, get him a book here, Clavis. Yeah, let me uh, hold, hold that up, Mike. Let me just so get it down. This was Christmas of 1943. Okay. Did she enjoy the date? <laughs> Did your wife enjoy the date? Yeah. <laughs> Good night, too. Okay, and this... Uh, <coughs> what no. are those? Oh, yeah. Notice from the, when I got wounded to my wife. So she got two notices then, because you were wounded twice. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can focus right in on that. Okay. All right. And uh, I was going to say he can hold up his purple heart yeah. still. Now, do you, can you pick yourself out in each one of those photographs? Oh, yeah. I'm right in the front here. I'm right here. Go ahead. I'm right here sitting down. Now, do you remember where those were taken? Uh. This was in Camp Frost, Carolina. And this one was so. In fact, most of these were in Camp Frost. Okay, if you could hold them up so Wayne could focus on them. So those were taken while you were in camp in, in, uh, in South in Carolina? Carolina? Right. I see a couple motorcycles there in the background. Did you ever get to ride one of them? No. <laughs> we were supposed to be in a motorized outfit at that time. Okay. Now, when you were in your MP unit, did you get to ride a motorcycle at all over no. Europe? Now, what about the boxing one? Is that you in there? Yeah. Were you a boxer? No, well, I was in the Golden Gloves. Oh, well, so you were oh. a boxer then. How well, no, did you that was just, uh, <laughs> How well did you do in the Golden Gloves? Okay. I won one and lost one. Okay. Well, well, that's a pretty good record. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those are nice. And where are those top three photographs? Where were they taken? Oh, I got, I got these pictures. Oh, okay, from someone? Yeah. Uh, how about the photograph of you? Do you remember where that one was taken? Well, it was in France someplace. Okay. Okay, can you just flip that around so it's right side up? Oh. Okay. So that was toward the end of the war then, probably? Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay. Were there any other little stories you remember that you want to tell us before we stop? Um, maybe uh, we were making one attack and we were getting fired at. And the gun next, I started shooting back and the gun next to me said, Stop shooting in my ear. Uh. <laughs> Got so many cases. Daddy, how about the time when you passed your cousin when you were... Oh, Joey Viano, yeah. My, my, my wife had uh, told my cousin to uh, watch for me. I was in the 390th MP battalion. So I was in charge of going to get an order report from the other office, you know. So I'm going along the road in the jeep, and I had no big walk this soon after the truck. It was my cousin from Espiegel. So he stayed with me for a few days and then he went back. He 
to get home safe, Joe. Mm -hmm. Is he still living? No, he died. Oh. Okay, well, thank you very much for your interview. Quite all right.